Hi everybody, Josiah here, also known as Chilling Silence, and it's midnight here in New Zealand. I'm trying to keep a little bit quiet because my wife is sleeping just next door, but we've got people who are upset on the internet, and we've got people who are wrong on the internet, and hopefully we can calm the two of them down a little bit and show them everything's going to be okay. So, there is a post that's been put up on Reddit, and now it looks like this individual has gone through and tried to update some old information that originally Charlie Lee put out, it was inaccurate at the time, and even this, the person themselves have admitted they're doing a whole lot of crazy mental gymnastics about a whole lot of unknowns. But, going by what we do know, everything's still fine, and I'm gonna break it down for you. So, what they talk about here is they talk about how much hardware capital overall has been invested in securing certain networks, in this case, Digibyte how much hardware would you need if you were to basically like replicate the entire network like what's backing up the digibyte network right now in terms of mining hardware so it's kind of cool now unfortunately originally this was posted on digibyte and it was accidentally deleted by the auto moderator i took a screenshot sent it to them and basically said hey look i'm sorry auto moderator didn't like your screenshot of a spreadsheet i don't know why it just doesn't. I guess it might have thought they were boobies or something. Computers, not too bright, but whatever. Um, so we restored it on slash r slash digibyte as well. Um, I apologize. They said, yeah, look, no harm, no foul. They said, we're sorry. We apologize that people have been jumping on you, calling you guys overzealous, whatever. Misunderstanding there, shit happens, whatever. But... So what they do is they, they've gone through and they've talked about how much hardware is needed on the Digibyte network, the theory that somebody could 51% attack it, what goes into it, and all of that kind of juicy stuff. Unfortunately, this has also been picked up by certain news places. Um, they've actually done a really, really poor job, but whatever. I mean, that's... Digibyte is open to 51% attack analysis. There's actually no analysis whatsoever. Um, and I think this is kind of the part that I've been talking about a little bit in Telegram, is that these places sell headlines. They want you to click on it. There are ads here, and even though... Oh, you can't see it. Even though at the top here I've got uBlock Origin running, we still got ads. That's still how they make their money. They just want to get a quick click in there, and then you can disappear doesn't matter to them if it's accurate or not. So, why don't we take any opportunity, actually educate people, and walk them into the Digibyte network. So, we're gonna do exactly that. Now, uh, they specifically, where are we here? Ah, oh, yeah, actually, there was one other thing. Um, is there an ongoing 51% attack on the network? Short answer is no. No, there is not. Um, even posing that question is kind of funny. Yeah, but whatever. Um, and in fact, they, they've included some things in here from my responses, basically going, no, it's fine. And um, the original author themselves down here says, so to your point, this particular entity is mining 8% of the blocks. I know it's late. I know it's midnight. But last I checked, 8% was still far less than 51%. <laughs> anyway, so... Um, yeah, look, let's 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 go over a couple of things really quickly. So, number one, Digibyte is permissionless. The fact that somebody is mining on the network and we don't know who they are, even the fact that there's potentially multiple entities. Sweet as, like that's great and that's something that we should encourage. We are a permissionless blockchain. That means there's nobody that you have to ask permission to either send, receive, mine, it doesn't matter, it's all irrelevant. We don't need to know who these people are. They don't have to tell the world anything. They could mine for the rest of their lives completely anonymously, and that is the network working as intended. It's beautiful. Now, um, a couple of things here. Um, is, sorry, so number two. Um, ongoing 51% attack. This is wrong. They even mention here as well, they say, look, we can see them mining on the network. That means they're being an honest actor. So if somebody, let's say a 51% attack was occurring, what would happen is they would mine in secret. They would basically 
not be mining regular blocks. What usually happens with a 51% attack is you'll you'll have kind of somebody, what's the best way of explaining this? They'll mine it off in separate, like firewalled and, and, and compartmentalized. Now on the rest of the network, they've got another computer and they'll make a deposit, usually into an exchange. And they'll say, I want to deposit all of my Digibyte. I'm then gonna sell that Digibyte for Bitcoin. Usually, for example, I'm just hypothesis. Let's use Bitcoin gold or something because it's happened to them. I'll deposit my Bitcoin gold into the network, uh, sorry, into the exchange. And over here in private, I'm mining, but I'm not including that transaction. So I'm still mining. Now, what happens is they go, they sell their Bitcoin gold, they get Bitcoin, they withdraw the Bitcoin from the exchange. Over here, where they've been mining in secret, they basically then broadcast that off to the rest of the world and go, surprise, we effectively forked the network from before that transaction, we've been mining in secret, we've done more work since then, hey, rest of the world, here's what we believe to be a true and valid and accurate record, and it doesn't actually include that transaction over there. So we've still got our original Bitcoin gold, and we've got this Bitcoin now, that's why it's called the double spend attack. So that's how it works. Now, if we can see somebody mining, and they're generating blocks, that we can see on the regular, on the network, that's not an ongoing 51% attack. That's them behaving like a normal miner, being honest. Cool. Um, now, again, it's it's not 51% either because where, where did this guy go? He says himself here, one entity with most of the, the quibit is currently mining about 8% of the blocks on the network. That's not even half of all the Quibit blocks. That's 8% of the whole network. Like, that's... That's nothing. That's far less than 51%. So, um, one of the things, though, that, that I think is worth noting is if we do want to talk collusion, yeah, let's talk collusion, and let's talk about what could happen if multiple entities were to collude. I've actually talked about this before, specifically. I, uh, I don't think I've got the Medium article handy. But where CZ uh, and Binance were hacked, and CZ made the off-the-cuff remark, and he basically said, yeah, we'll roll back the Bitcoin blockchain and get our, our 40 million back. We'll basically kind of fork it from before that transaction occurred and before the funds were stolen. We'll mine at a faster rate than the main chain, we'll outpace it, and then we'll broadcast our new version of things to the network, and that will become the new new. Yeah... Let's see. I mean, so even on Bitcoin, so this was actually taken as of as of a couple of hours ago. Uh, I posted this an hour ago, but it was it was I took the screenshot like three hours ago. The same number of people would need to collude on Digibyte, if not more, than on Bitcoin. Yeah. That makes sense. So the way that it works is because we've got our multi-algo and everything happening at the moment, um, you need to basically have the, the spread across all of the algorithms. Otherwise, multi-shield is going to kick in and, and you're not going to be able to mine the blocks as fast. So long story short, looking at that, Digibyte, pretty solid spread. Bitcoin, pretty solid spread. Litecoin. You don't need to get three people colluding instead of the one, two, three, four, five at least needed for Digibyte, if not more, depending on what algorithms those are. Because if, keep in mind, you've got to have a good spread of the algorithms as well, or otherwise MultiShield's going to balance it out. So, potentially need even more going around like seven, eight, nine, depending on what algorithms they are. And I think a couple of those are, I think that one and that one are mining the same algorithm. Don't hold me to it. Um, but anyway, so... Like, if people want to have a talk about what would be involved in terms of collusion of miners and that kind of thing, yeah, let's have a chat, sure. But at the moment, these are, again, like I've mentioned, they're honest people mining on the network. And that's cool. Like, we can't stop them. Just like with Litecoin, we've got three people that are honest miners on the network. They could, in theory, collude. We can't stop them. It's all about the, the whole, I suppose, game theory behind proof of work and things like that. But anyway, perhaps what we should do is look at, uh, where are we? Where are we? Where are we? Um, when I talk as well about measuring decentralization through unique miners, I've gone into it in the past here. I've even given you some of the details so you can do it yourself. And when we look at 
Bitcoin's unique miners, Litecoin's unique miners, and Digibyte's unique miners over the same amount of time. So over a seven day period, oh no, I don't wanna write a note. Uh, over a seven day period for Digibyte, we had 329 unique miners. Litecoin had 26, Bitcoin had 33. Yeah, so anyway, um, where are we here? Oh yeah, this is what I wanted to talk about. So this is the fifth point that I want to make. Okay, so number one, let's quickly just, we'll recap these real quick. Number one, permissionless. It's cool that we don't know who they are. Number two, this is not ongoing. We can see them mining. They're honest miners as far as we can tell. We have no reason to believe otherwise. Number three, they have nowhere near 51%. Nowhere near. Even if we presume that all of these unknown entities are actually the same entity, we're still averaging like the combined total around about like 30%, which is, yeah, it's, it's a non-event. Who cares? If we want to talk collusion, point number four, let's talk collusion. Let's have a genuine chat about it. But let's not just jump on the hype bandwagon here. So number five, securing the blockchain with hardware. Now this is what I've, I've one of the things I wrote back because I said it's pretty cool that you estimate here that there is $50 million in hardware capital securing the Digibyte blockchain when the market cap is currently 170 million. I said 30% ratio is, is pretty incredible. This is based off of their math here. Uh, so let's go back to that. What else did I say? So Bitcoins is being secured by 4 billion in capital. Now 4 billion compared with 50 million? That's a lot more. I'm aware of that. That's cool. It's not much though compared to its 141 billion market cap at the time of writing. Uh, it works out to roughly like 3% give or take. Litecoin has 231 million, uh, which is 8% of its 2.88 billion market cap. So these numbers are obviously very loose, presuming a couple of things. But like I said here, I'm even more optimistic about the future of Digibyte with that stat. So thanks for sharing. Now, if you are curious, you can go and have a look at digistats.digibyteservers.io. And you can have a look at a whole lot of blockchain stats. We're not, like, there's nothing to hide nothing to worry about you can go in and you can even see them and in fact like let's go back let's have a look at the yeah let's pick sha256 why not let's go view and let's change it from the last 24 hours let's go back and have a look at the last years you'll see it goes up and down a whole bunch that's it working as intended that's multi-shield working as intended with multi-shield going and adjusting all of the difficulties and things like that is this actually going to update it's taking a sweet time whatever and that's, so multi-shield is supposed to increase and decrease the difficulty very rapidly to account for, yeah, there we go, cool, we can see it coming in, going out, sweet. So, it's supposed to adjust them all very rapidly to account for a sudden influx or outflow of hash rate, while still keeping them at 20%. And I've actually, I'll tell you what we'll do, let's, let's quickly, we'll bring up medium as well, just so that you can see this, because I know I'm going to get asked about it. You can scroll down and we can go to measuring the expected block timing for difficulty adjustment. So if we have a look down here, I've got another graph. This is again, this is different from this graph. Keep that in mind. So this is for the block timing and how accurate it was or how far off it was. So this is how far off it was from what it ought to have been. Just to give you an idea, this is how close Digibyte is. Thanks to MultiShield, it's pretty freaking awesome. So. A couple of things to take away from this. Number one, there's no ongoing 51% attack at all. Number two, I'm really not worried, not at all. Number three, these people are honest miners from all that we can see. We do know that they have potentially more hash rate than others. Cool, sweet. Thanks for investing in the network. Appreciate it, that's great stuff. We can also expect that because these other algorithms are younger, I suppose, in terms of their mining, there's not as much like money up for grabs when it comes to Digibyte and things like that compared with Bitcoin. Yeah, sure, we are going to see this kind of thing happen where one entity is going to come out and they've got more more hash rate. We saw this with, for example, Black Miner and their F1 minis right around the time that we were launching Autocrypt. They came out and they were a lot better. They were a huge step up from the DE10 Nanos or the Cyclone 5 starter kits and things like that. 
That's cool. That's to be expected. We've even found more and they've squeezed more out of their hardware. And there are other entities that have come along that are also squeezing more out of that same kind of hardware capital investment. You're getting more hash rate for it, more bang for your buck, more power efficiency. That's to be expected. So thank you to those entities for supporting the Digibyte network and mining on it. Uh, I don't know if I've, if I've said this. I think I have. Um, it doesn't matter that they're unknown as well, though. This is part of being a decentralized, permissionless blockchain. Now, that part is really key. And it's something that I think that we should cherish and, and hold our heads high about, really, more than anything. Gonna wrap it up there, but I would encourage the community at all. I know a lot of people are out there, like, with their pitchforks going, no, do not spread misinformation. I agree. Don't spread misinformation. But... We have a really good opportunity here to educate a lot of people. There's been a lot of eyeballs on Digibyte lately, and I think it's great. Why stop there though? Just because some people have got some things wrong. There's no need to jump down their throats about it, and I think that we've got a real good chance here to welcome people into the Digibyte community. Welcome them to look at those stats. We have nothing to hide, so go and look at them. Ask those probing and difficult questions because that is exactly the kind of thing that is going to get people absolutely hooked on Digibyte just like I am. That's going to be all from me for now. If you do have questions, feel free to sing out in the comment section below. You can hit me up on Twitter. I'm at DGB underscore chilling. Otherwise, I'll talk to you in the next video. I might not see you tomorrow, actually, because it's after midnight and I'm kind of sleepy, but <laughs> we'll see you soon. Cheers.